In this example, we're going to have a look at a special sort of first order differential equation called a Bernoulli equation. Let's look at the general form of the Bernoulli equation first. All Bernoulli equations can be written in this very specific form dy dx plus p of x, which is some function of x only, and that function of x may be a constant function, multiplied by y equals q of x, some function of x, again which might be a constant, multiplied by y to the power n, where n is a constant. Now if the constant n is 0, or if the constant n is 1, it's very straightforward to show that the equation is a linear equation. And if we have a linear equation, then we can use any of the techniques for solving linear equations, such as the integrating factor method. So we're now we're going to assume that n is not 0 and n is not 1, in which case the equation is nonlinear. not linear or non-linear as we say. So when we have a non-linear Bernoulli equation it turns out that the substitution z equals y to the 1 minus n where n remember is the constant up here on the right hand side that particular substitution or change of variable will linearize the differential equation and that means it takes this nonlinear equation and transforms it into a differential equation which is linear. And once we have a linear equation, then we can use a method such as the integrating factor method to solve it. So that's the substitution that we'll need. Notice that when we make this substitution, what we're going to do is we're going to change the dependent variable y into a new variable, new dependent variable z. The independent variable, variable x, will still be the independent variable. Let's have a look at a specific example. So the example I'm going to have a look at is dy dx minus 2y is e to the 3x y cubed. Let's compare this with the general form. And if we do that, you'll see we have a dy dx term at the beginning. p of xy, we compare that with minus 2y and we see that p of x must be the constant function, minus 2, in this particular case. Of course, it could be a variable in the general case. And on the right-hand side, with q of x, the, the function q of x must be e to the 3x. And n must be 3. So we, we do have a nonlinear Bernoulli equation. We make the substitution, z equals y to the 1 minus n, which in this case is y to the 1 minus 3, which is y to the minus 2. We might want to write that as 1 over y squared. What I'm going to do now is we're going to change the dependent variable y to this new variable x, so we need an expression for dy dx. We get that expression by differentiating z with respect to x. So let's take the substitution, z is y to the minus 2, and differentiate both sides with respect to x. So if we differentiate the left with respect to x, we'll get dz dx. And if we differentiate the right with respect to x, what we want is d by dx of y to the minus 2. But this is a function of y. So we use the chain rule, and we differentiate with respect to y, but multiply by dy dx. Now the derivative of y to the minus 2 with respect to y is minus 2y to the minus 3. And then we have dy dx on the end there. So this means that we can change dz dx into some multiple here of dy dx, or conversely I'm going to rearrange this to get dy dx in terms of dz dx, and I'm doing that so that I can substitute it in the differential equation there. So if I just um, rearrange dz dx is minus 2y to the minus 3 dy dx, 
I can write minus a half y cubed dz dx is dy dx. So that's the form in which I'm going to substitute for dy dx. So let's substitute into the given equation. And if we do that, instead of dy dx, we'll write minus a half y cubed dz dx. Minus 2y becomes minus 2y. Let's leave that as it is. And on the right, e to the 3x y cubed. And an important point to note, and this will always work out like this, is that we have a y cubed on the left and a y cubed over here on the right. So I'm going to divide every term by y cubed. So we'll have minus a half dz dx. If we divide y by y cubed, there we'll have minus 2 over y squared. And the y cubed will disappear when we divide through by y cubed. Now notice now that we have a 1 over y squared in here, and a 1 over y squared is the same as z. So what we've really got here is minus a half dz dx minus 2z equals e to the 3x. And we'll notice at this stage that this is a linear equation in z. So even at this stage, the substitution z is y to the 1 minus n has now produced a linear differential equation. I'm just going to write it in a slightly different form by multiplying through by minus 2. So if we multiply by minus 2, then we'll get dz dx plus 4z equals minus 2 e to the 3x. And that's in a slightly more standard form. The task now is to solve that linear equation. I'll do that next. So let's write down the equation again. dz dx plus 4z equals minus 2 e to the 3x. So that's a linear equation in z. We solve that using the integrating factor method, and I'm going to assume that you know how to apply the integrating factor method now. The integrating factor in this particular case, let's call it r of x, will be e to the integral of this term in front of the z here, which is 4, e to the integral of 4 dx, which is e to the 4x. Once we have the integrating factor, it follows that d by dx of e to the 4x times z is equal to the integrating factor times the right-hand side, which is going to be minus 2 e to the 7x. From this line, we can integrate both sides, and we'll get e to the 4xz is equal to minus 2 over 7 e to the 7x, plus a constant of integration, from which z must be minus 2 sevenths e to the 3x plus c e to the minus 4x. And that's the general solution for z. Finally, remember that z is 1 over y squared, so that y squared is 1 over z, so that in this case y squared must be 1 divided by minus 2 sevenths e to the 3x plus c e to the minus 4x. And we can leave the solution like that, or we can write it as y equals plus or minus 1 over the square root of minus 2 sevenths e to the 3x plus c e to the minus 4x. And that is the general solution of the Bernoulli equation.